I let nothing or no one take my praise nor worship and give it all to you. I hold nothing back for myself, but I give it all to you. So I thank you, mighty God, for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. If you could all turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah 40, 53, sorry. So Isaiah 53, we'll be reading from one to the end. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form in our commonness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgression, your transgression, yes. or transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, yes. and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasures of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Twelve and last. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the progressors. And I want to transgressors, my apologies. And I want to just focus on four and five. Surely had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And he took such chastisement, struck stricken with grace. The verse that he didn't even open his mouth like a lamb that is dumb. When he went to the slaughter, he knew what he was doing. He did it for us. He did it for me. He did it for you. But at that very moment, he could have said, no, not me. Angels, come and take me. No, not me. But he humbled himself. And he took on our sins. Our sins. He took it on his shoulders. Some would say he took it like a champ. Some would say he took it like a champ. All of our afflictions, everything that we have done, he took it on onto himself. A man that has never sinned. A man that has never done anything wrong took on our sins, our transgressions, everything that we could have done to be separated from God. He took on himself and he laid it down and he said, by these stripes, we are healed. Not just me, not just Rev. We are healed. So look at it as no good 
thing that you have done, no good thing that I have done, Jesus had already made up his mind. So regardless if you lift your hand today, regardless what you want to do today, he's still God. Yes. He's still God. Yes. He's still God, but I heard you to give him the glory. I heard you to give him the praise. I urge you to forget about whoever standing next to you and you're in front of you. And to know that we're here to serve the living God. But we're not here for ourselves. No, we're here for him. He doesn't need us, but we need him to carry us through the rest of his days. To carry us through the rest of the week. Because I don't know what anyone else is going through. But he knows. He knows. He knows. And we're going to go to the throne together. Thank you, mighty God. We worship you, mighty God. We shabbat you, mighty God, for there is none like unto you. So we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we magnify your matchless name. You sit high and you look low, mighty God, and we thank you that the very things on earth are not far from you. You have put your very ears, mighty God, to our lips, Father. So we thank you, mighty God, for though we walk through this valley, we walk through the shadow of death. We will fear no evil, for you are God all by yourself. And I thank you, mighty God, for sitting on the throne. I thank you for reigning and reigning supreme. I thank you for this hour. I thank you for this minute and this second. And we come to give you praise. We all back nothing from you, great and honor. And we come into your presence with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
beauty of holiness. And we are here this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. We are here to shabbat the name of Jesus. We are here to glorify the name of Jesus. This name is higher than every other name. There is something about the name of Jesus. Shabbat the name of Jesus. Let's go.
Yeah. 
bless the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Don't mind if we do things a little different today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you just have to 
verse 18. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And read it again. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, hallelujah, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. As I'm able to look at life, look at world affairs, um, look at wars uh, countries go through, I realized at one time or the other there was defeat. Countries lost wars, wives lost husbands, children lost fathers, world affairs such as the stock market suffer loss. And even in life I have and continue to experience loss as I'm sure many of you do. Whether it's through the loss of a loved one, or not attaining a goal or a level you're striving for, loss of appetite, loss of desire, loss of love, loss of patience, loss of times, and many times loss of even the mind it would seem. And if we should look at this world through biblical sight, we can see that we live in a broken world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Among broken people. Yes. Trying to make the best of broken situations. Yes. And to tell the truth, even or best attempts is never enough. Yes. Nor does it ever hit the mark. Because we live in a broken realm. I've had the opportunity, and I'm sure, I'm not too sure if opportunity is the right word to use, but I've had the opportunity to scan over my life. Not only my life, but life on a whole or in general. And I can repeat what the preacher Solomon declared in Ecclesiastes 12. Verse 8, where he says, Vanity of vanities. All is vanity, says the preacher. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity, says the preacher. And that vanity, it means meaningless. It's of no worth. It's temporary. It's nothing really to hold on to or to build on. Vanity of oh, vanities, all oh, is vanity. And if we can be real for a couple of minutes, life is hard. Yes, sir. Life is hard. And I can boldly say, that anybody who would stand up and say, no, it isn't, <laughs> I'd call you a liar. Because it doesn't matter the status. It doesn't matter the bank account. It doesn't matter the job title, the pedigree, the lineage. Life is hard. The reality of life is that it's not easy. The path we take on this road to try and fulfill our destiny or get to our destination is not an easy path, but it's worth it. But it's still not easy. Life is hard, man. And I know we can say, 
Christ came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And yes, that is true. Amen. But it still doesn't change the fact. So life is hard. Yes. And if you should dissect that scripture, pull it apart, exegete it, hermeneticalize it, whatever you want to call it, you would see what it's really talking about. Life is hard. Yes. Look at it. We get up early every day. Go to work for a boss to earn just enough hmm? to keep us getting up the next day and the next day and the next day to do the same thing. And it doesn't matter the job location or the salary or the hourly pay. It's not easy. And to tell the truth, most people really don't even like their boss. They don't like where they work. They don't like the people they work with. But you get up every day, amen, and swipe up. Life is hard. When you try to work till you're 60 or 65, Years old, amen, so you can have enough money to retire, but your body is so beaten up uh, and broken down for working all those years, amen, uh, hallelujah, and very, very few people get to really enjoy retirement the way it was meant. They'll pitch a good picture, but the reality is even after retirement, life is hard. We do our best to keep ourselves healthy. We exercise. He's right. We laugh. <laughs> we try to watch what we eat. We try to control or regulate our body functions. Amen. And tone everything up. Uh, amen. To the utmost, uh, to get the utmost performance out of this body so it can function well in this broken world. And we try to make it give us an advantage. And even at our best optimal health, there's nothing stopping us from dropping down dead in this place. Paul writing to Timothy, in Timothy 1 40, he says, Listen, Paul, listen, Timothy, bodily exercise bring little profit. He didn't say it brings no profit, but it brings little profit. But yet it doesn't stop anything from happening. Marriages have issues. Children have issues. Parents have issues. Siblings have issues. Even the cat and dog have issues. The house, the cars, the business, the private jets, the yachts. You can name them all till next Sunday. And it will not change the fact that life is hard. Paul in Romans chapter 8, 22 and 23. He says, all creation groans and travails in pain together. Even us believers groan, amen, and travail in pain, waiting for this adoption process to finalize, to bring about the redemption of our body. And so even believers are going through it. I've seen where the hunger, amen, is devastating in different parts of, of the world. Little children, even babies, amen, are, are sucking on the breast of their mother, trying to get some little milk or something just to wet their throat, amen. Forget about filling their bellies. Uh, and even that, uh, there was a loss. Uh, and in some cases, the little one dies, amen, because of the lack of nutrition. And in some other cases, even the parents die and leave the little children to fend for themselves in this evil world. Life is hard. Mankind has reached such a low state 
that the best many will do is take a photo, amen, and send it to you in a letter, amen, asking you to sow a seed. And by the time, amen, it reaches those that don't have, amen, there's not enough to even keep them alive, amen. Why? Because they have to pay for the fuel for the jet. The CEO of the hierarchy have to take their cut out. If we didn't have Christ in this life, uh, amen, to hope in, uh, we would be the most miserable set of people on the face of this earth, amen. And when you connect it with what the wise man Solomon says, uh, that all is meaningless uh, and all is useless, uh, vanity of vanities, uh, you can see why, amen. Because in the morning, Psalms 9 verse 6 says, uh, you're fresh and blooming, uh, and by evening time, uh, you win. Life. This thing we fight to hold on to life. This thing we kill for. We malign for. We scrutinize for. We gossip against others for. Life. Because how can we find satisfaction and comfort? in this broken world. Amen. Yet somehow we manage to. Somehow we become comfortable forgetting that we are only on a journey. Amen. That Jesus, through this weary troubled land. Yes. Hallelujah. We are only passing through. We are not home yet. Amen. It isn't the final destination uh, where we are down here. Amen. We're only pilgrims passing through. Like Abraham, we are looking uh, for a city uh, whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. So don't uh, be content uh, where you are. Don't kick up your foot uh, and come to ten and say, now I can take it easy. Because life uh, is about to take a turn uh, for some of us. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. You too will utter that life is hard, and you too will look for another city whose builder and maker is God. The songwriter says, I'm only on a journey in this weary, troubled land, and my home is over yonder on the bright and shiny strand. Many times I feel discouraged, and my hopes are all. Close beside me, I'm bound to travel closer on. I will never leave this highway, no matter how rough it seems. For I know the Lord is leading to the land of treasure dreams. I can feel His arms around me, that I know I'm not alone. Trusting Him with sweet assurance, I'm bound to travel on. Hallelujah. I can't get those old songs uh, out of my mind, out of my spirit, uh, because there's something, uh, when you begin to sing them, uh, they begin to minister to you. Hallelujah. 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 Every sunset uh, brings me near a reality to my eternal resting place. Uh, reality for us soon join in the singing uh, with millions saved by grace. What a hallelujah morning uh, when I meet all the friends I know. Uh, hallelujah till I stand uh, in heaven, in that blood circle. Church, I'm bound to travel on. Songwriter said, I am determined uh, to hold out to the end. Uh, Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. Whatever you have to do to push through, to make it in, make it in. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The songwriter says, I'm bound to travel on, on this blessed gospel road. For the Lord, he'll walk beside me and he'll share my heavy load. Till I reach the land of glory, over by the shining throne. Till the Savior clinging and the joy bells ringing, I am bound to travel on. Paul said it like this, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you can't take the shackles off. You can't take me out of the prison. Amen. I am there willingly. Yes, life is hard. 
But there is a hope we have in Christ that, that makes this strange pathway worth it. Amen. I don't understand it. I can't put my finger on it. Amen. All I know is that he walks beside me and he shares a heavy load. Amen. It is a heavy load. Hallelujah. At times uh, it feels like I'm crumbling under it. At times it wets our pillows uh, with tears at night. At times it causes stress. At times it brings us down to our knees. But you will see, amen. When it seems to be unbearable, and you're still standing underneath it, amen. Just know it's not you standing anymore, amen. He's a heavy load bearer. You can count on his strength. So let the storm clouds rise, let the storm wind blow. Amen. They don't trouble me. Why? Because he's unmovable. Hallelujah. They don't bother me. He's unshakable. They don't trouble me. He's unstoppable. They don't intimidate me because I'm sheltered in the arms of God. And he is God alone and there is no God besides him. Many people search for a convenient God. A God that fits their agenda. A God that fits their lifestyle. And when that God fails, and they have no place to turn to, they say, what's the use of living anymore? But there is one God that has never failed. Amen. And so as for me, I, can, uh, amen, I can't find any satisfaction down here. So everything of me, everything about me, I live for is Jesus Christ uh, and Him alone. Uh, and Paul said it like this. Yes, uh, I am a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why the Apostle Paul could say Philippians uh, chapter 121. Uh, amen. And on that, for, to, for me to live uh, is Christ. For me to live is Christ. Yet to leave this broken, paraphrase it, yet to leave this broken place is gain. It's better. But I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Having a desire to go. But there's a little part of me that knows I must stay. Amen. So I see where staying is more beneficial for the time being than if I go. So I say, life. So when we incorporate what Jesus said in Matthew, that the gates of hell shall not prevail. I want us to know that no matter how dark it, it gets, no matter how dim it, it looks, no matter how big or small the arrows and fiery darts are that are sent, amen, no matter the incantations or the curse uh, and the weakness and the attacks and the pressure, at the end of the day, I can rest assured that God, who is not a man, that he should lie, neither is he the son of man, that he should repent of or change his mind. One thing I know is that while going through it all, one thing I know is that at the end of it all, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Come on, slap yourself on the chest and talk to yourself. And say, the gates of hell shall not prevail. start to encourage ourselves in the Lord and stop talking what everybody else is talking. Amen. And start to speak to your own spirit. Encourage yourself. Amen. In the Lord. And lift yourself up above the great clouds. Or all the gates of hell. No matter what they try to do, they shall not prevail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because it shall not prevail, Triple T, 
It's time we start to double team, uh, triple team, uh, and get up, amen, uh, and get the enemy running out, amen, uh, rise up in the power and the authority that is inside of us, amen. Uh, I've been through enough uh, to know enough is enough, uh, enough is enough, uh, enough is enough. Uh, a tear down in the out of hell today, in the name of Jesus, uh, a root of every root of hell, in the name of Jesus Christ. There's time for nice talking. There are times for nice prayers. There are times for nice speeches. But there are other times, hallelujah, hallelujah, where you gotta just put on, amen, the fighting clothes, amen. Put on the clothes you can get rough up in, amen, and go headlong to the enemy, amen, take no prisoners, amen. It's time we start to pick up uh, some graves uh, that have our pictures.
the mighty yes. name of Jesus. And so because the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need to stop wasting the time. Yes. Mighty yes. God. Jesus said, who do men say I am? Yes. Have your way, Lord. And it really matters who you see Christ as, or who you think, or what you think of it as, that will determine the actions you take and know the capacity of authority you operate in within your calling. Amen. Some call him John the Baptist. Some call him Elias. Elijah. Others say he's Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But whom? You see, that's, that's oh, everything else in there is good. But this is uh, where you get down to the nitty gritty, where nobody else in yeah can answer for you. You have to come uh, to terms uh, with your own self uh, and your own life. Uh, who do you say he is? Who is he to you? If he's a prophet, you'll treat him like a prophet. Yes. If he's a best friend, you'll treat him like a best friend. Slave master, you look at him as a slave master. If he's another man to you, then you'll treat him like he's just another man. But he's the bread of life. Because if you look at the end of that verse, 
in Matthew 16, verse 18, you will find a period at the end of it. Meaning that nothing else needs to be added. It is settled. It is final. And what is before that period? The gates of hell shall not prevail. Period. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. It shall not prevail. It shall not prevail. But it's trying to prevail. And not everybody is always at the same place where they can know how to navigate against it. And the best of us at times, or faith is high one time, and then it's low another time. At times we're the best encouragers. And other times we're looking at crowned for somebody to see us and encourage more. That's the life of the past. I don't know if you're here, and that sounds like you, but if you need prayer, I'm going to ask you to come up quickly. Amen. We have something else to continue afterwards. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Who am I that the King would plead?
going to ask those that are here with the baby for dedication. If you can release a little
But the God has given angels charge over these children. Amen. Because Jesus says, beware, because their angels always do see the face of my Father. Meaning there is an angel that takes account, takes record of what you do with this child, what you do around this child, how you treat the child. And the angel goes directly, not to the doorkeeper of the throne room, but right before the very face of God. And God says, tell me what you have to tell me to show his interest that he has in this little child. Amen. Because to tell the truth, many prophets, evangelists, missionaries that came through the birth canal was led into other paths that brought destruction. There are name a few, Hitler. And you can go on and on. And then there are countless others who have not even made it that far. And so God takes special interest. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, to suffer the little children to come unto me. And forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And so when he says suffer, he means do everything to guide and steer them towards me. Because the kingdom of God is seen in the attitude, the behavior, and everything like a child. The innocence. You can whip this child till tomorrow. And she'll still come crawling back into your arms. And that just shows the connection that God has placed in her towards you. She won't look to anybody else for instructions or direction or love or care or support. But she'll always come to you. Give her to anybody else and she'll start to cry. And she'll look for you and reach where no matter how far back you are. And until you hold that child in your hand, she won't stop crying. Just to show the connection that is there. And so you've done well to bring her back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I pray that even as you bring her back to the Lord, that you too will come to know the Lord in a special way. Amen. Amen. Not only as Jesus, as some call him, not only as a prophet, as some say he is, but as your Lord and Savior. Amen. To properly raise this child. Amen. And so I'm going to, uh, her name is, I'm afraid to say it all, but <laughs> Avaya? 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 Say? Shabbat. Shabbat. Empress Davis. Um, first girl. So you, you heard the first part, right? First girl. Amen. Amen. Now we declare that no weapon that is formed against her is 
regardless of bloodline, regardless of ancestral lineage, regardless of jealousy. No weapon made that is formed against her shall prosper. But that she shall grow up in the wisdom and the knowledge yes, of the Lord. Amen. And she shall come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And therefore, Father, assign angels unto her to steer her in the right path. Yes. That she dare not stray yes. in the name of Jesus. And one day she will stand up in that which you call her to do. Oh God, that way when she stands before you to give an account, uh, she shall say, Hear my master, here is what I have done according to what you have set me upon the earth to fulfill. It is fulfilled for your glory. And so, Father, as I commit her into your hands, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we decree and declare blessings over her in Jesus' mighty name. We decree and declare peace over her in Jesus' mighty name. We decree and declare there shall be no lack concerning her in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. She shall not bring shame. Hallelujah to the family. She shall not be the reason any police car, oh God, darkens the door section in the name of Jesus. But the glory that you will place upon her will bring a light, of oh God, to those around her. That the very cry, God, you will get air to. In the name of Jesus. And command your angels to move swiftly. Thank and you, mighty God. Thank you. And so now, Father, I dedicate her back to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm going to give the certificate to you, sir. And the reason is you'll find out that after a while she'll gravitate to you. She'll look to you as the example. How you treat her mother, that is how she will expect men to treat her. How you care for her and value her, that's the value she will look for in others towards her. And so, I tell you, take very good care of her. Amen. When you think she's not watching, she's watching. Amen. When you think she's not listening, she's listening. Yes. And she's at that age when she'll soak everything in. And after a while, it will be hard to filter it out of her. Yes. So be the example to her. Love her. Hallelujah. How you want others to love her. And when she grows older, and it should come time that somebody takes interest in her, she will look for the value and qualities that she sees in her father from that person, and nothing less. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And all my life you have been so so
reminded us God that the gates of hell shall not prevail. So anything God in front, behind, top or beneath, it shall not prevail. So Father we pray you will go before us in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember those who have cried out God the victory that they received. Give them the strength and the power to keep and to maintain it in the name of Jesus in respect of how the devil might be huffing or puffing. They came for their healing and they are leaving back with it. And, uh, the respect about what may come in, what they are feeling, what they are sensing. Your words are already declare that the gates of hell shall not uh, prevail against it. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that the blessing of the glory that we experience in this house, it remain. In the mighty name of Jesus, and, uh, I'm gonna close. But get, just join hands, just join hands in one minute. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, and Father, as we come in unison, uh, God, as you are the Father and the Spirit, you are one. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come uh, and we lack hands, God Almighty. We might not understand what you know. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, as we join and together, God. We pray that you will make us not flames of fire in the name of Jesus Christ. As we lack hands, our possession and positions, they are lack and they are surrounded by you in the name of Jesus. Because what you have placed in the house, God, we know that the enemy is mad. But right now, what we are feeling, we don't care what mood is in in the name of Jesus because we are leaving with power. Jesus, so 